Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to uninstall the pixel mod that I talked about flashing I think weeks ago and um, I'll be showing you how to remove it and this is uh, this pretty much goes for any system based mod that you may have installed. Um, I'm trying to think of some but like maybe well, well I can't think of any at this point except for the pixel mod but this will remove any system based mod that you've flashed or installed. So we're going to do this two different ways. We can use uh, Flash Fire or we can use uh, Fastboot to do this. And I'll be going over both. But one thing in common that we'll need is the stock system image, which is available on the developers.google.com site here. Now this is just where we download our factory images. So we can go over to Angular for Nexus 6P, download the latest one, or whichever version that your device is on currently. So you can do this, uh, you should check before you do this. So go over to settings and then scroll down to about phone and then you can see that I'm, a, I'm on the NMF 26F build down here running 7.1.1. You can see everything's changed, the models should be being changed, the nav bar has been changed and the color scheme has been changed. So this will change it all back to what it was before. So back to our computer here. So you want to download the, the uh, factory image that is most suitable for your device. So mine's going to be the latest one, of course, down here. Uh, whoops, I highlighted everything, but yes, it is this one. So you're going to want to download that. I've already downloaded it, and it's just in a folder like this. And if you want to do this using Flash Fire, your device already needs to be rooted, which I'm sure it is. Um, otherwise, you can use Fastboot, which I'll show in the second half of this video. But Flash Fire, you can install that onto your device, and then uh, we'll get cracking. So once you've downloaded the factory image, you want to open it up. And then, because we only want the system image pretty much, so we're going to open up the folder, or this one, the nmf26f folder. We're going to open up this image-angular-nmf26f zip file inside. Now this will extract it to a temporary directory, and then open up the zip file, or at least that's how WinRAR does it. And so you're going to, well, you're going to have to wait a little bit for that. And once that is open, you can drag just this system image outside uh, to extract it. Uh, alternatively, you could just copy the entire factory image to your device and then let Flash Fire uh, you know, analyze the zip file and then choose just to flash the system image, but I guess this is a little bit neater. And you can also do this in TWRP if you uh, choose, choose to. So I guess I can show you guys three different ways of doing this. Uh, you can do whichever is most comfortable, probably Flash Fire, uh, but Usually I have everything on my computer, so I use Fastboot to do these things. But anyways, we're about to finish copying the system image, or extracting it. Okie doke, so we have our 2.62 gigabyte factory image. Now, I've only extracted the system image because uh, I can show you how to do it using uh, Fastboot and TWRP. But if it's FlashFire, you could have just copied the factory image onto your device instead, as it's um, pretty much half the size. So right now I'm going to plug our device in to the computer, like so, and we are going to have to uh, do that USB for charging, sorry not charging, USB file transfers, and we are going to need to copy over the system image. So go to this PC, go to Nexus 6P, or it could be named Pixel XL, and go to internal shared storage, I'm just going to pop it down at the bottom here, so if I just uh, make this clearer. I'm going to drag and drop the system image into this blank area where it says copy to root of storage, not into a folder or anything like that. Because uh, last time, or well, sometimes I do that and I can't find it ever again. So I'm going to copy this to the root of the uh, SD card. And this is a 2.6 gigabyte thing, so it might take a little bit longer. So if you just plan on using Flash Fire, um, you might want to flash, or sorry, copy over the factory image instead of using, or just instead of doing what I'm doing right now might save you a little bit of time, but since it's only going to be, I, I would say about five minutes, less than that really, three, two minutes left, I'll just uh, fast forward this process and I'll see you guys when this is finished and we'll be using flash fire. Okay, so we just finished copying and that probably took around two to three minutes and once this is done we can get on to the flashing process. So. First up, we're going to be using Flash Fire. 
Now it requires a rooted device using Super SU, I think, uh, because of how it, how it does extra things. Um, I've already got this installed. This is rooted with Super SU. So I open up Flashfire. It's going to ask for, for root access when you hit Grant. Uh, sorry for all the grease like streaks on the screen. I don't think it's too annoying, but. There we go. Uh, so it's going to enumerate partitions and properties. So I guess we'll just wait for that a little bit to do its thing. Uh, but if this doesn't work, um, then we'll just have to skip straight to TWRP and fastboot. But I'm sure, I'm pretty sure this should work. Now ah, there we go. And there we have a little disclaimer. I'm going to hit agree. Hit no thanks this time. So from here, we're going to press the plus button and we're going to select a uh, Whoa. I'm going to say firmware package and then go down to system.img and it's going to detect that it's a system image. I'm going to hit tick. You can see Everroot is disabled. That is because we are not replacing the boot image, which is what systemless root works off of. And the reboot will be normal. And I guess you can leave preserved recovery, it doesn't really matter because yet again, a boot image hasn't been touched. So I guess we could change that, but we'll, we won't. So I'm gonna hit flash, and I'm going to hit okay. Now I reckon this will happen in a matter of seconds, to be honest. Our, our devices are quite fast these days at copying things. So I'll wait for flash fire to load up, and then from there, um, I'll show you how to do it using TWRP and then lastly, fastboot. Okay, there we are. We have our transfer starting now. It has is going at 42 megabytes per second. So no doubt this will take a little bit of time, but um, I think it should be quite quick overall. So I'm going to fast forward this until it finishes, and then we'll go into part two of this guide. Um, so if you choose to use Flashfire and you did it, that's fine, you don't need to do anything else, but if you want to look at how it's done in TWRP, uh, you can stick around, and then if you want to have a look at how it's done in, using Fastboot, then you can stick around once more. So I'm going to fast forward this till it finishes, I'm going to wait for the phone to boot up, and then I'll cut to the TWRP action. Okay, so Flashfire has just finished doing its thing and our device will boot up accordingly. And I'm probably going to, probably going to fast forward this again and until we get to the Android home screen. And then I'll show you how to do it. Like I've pretty much said this three times, but and then I'm going to show you how to do it in TWRP and then fast boot. So I'm going to skip forward this and until we get to the Android home screen. Alrighty, so that was really quick. Well, I'm not really surprised to be honest, but here we are. We are back in. And now one thing, when you flash the factory image, sorry, the system image from the factory image, uh, your system images, sorry, your system apps are pretty much, you could say downgraded or replaced with the versions within the system image. Now that means when you go into the Play Store, you're probably going to be greeted with some app updates. If we just have a look real quick, you can see, uh, oh, Perhaps I'm wrong. Uh, usually, like before, it, it would ask me to update apps and all that. Maybe it will happen, maybe it won't, but uh, we shall see. So, next up, uh, this is the end of the video if you've done this already. Uh, you can see my navigation buttons are back to normal, our color schemes are back to normal. It's hard to see on this camera, but it is that kind of bluish gray. And then that's it. So, Thank you very much for watching. If you did the fast, uh, sorry, flash fire method, now I'm going to be showing you how to do it in TWRP, just in case you don't have access or root access on your device, because it is quite possible to flash the pixel mod uh, without root access. So we're going to restart. Sorry, I'm just going to power off the device because timing on this thing isn't very good, and you also want to unplug your cable while you're at it, just to save us some a little bit of time. Now this is with the system image already copied onto your device, so you will need to do that regardless. But if you plan on using fast boot, uh, you don't have to.
So I'm going to wait for our device to turn off. We're going to boot into TWRP now by holding power and volume down to get into the bootloader first. And then from within the bootloader, we're going to boot into the recovery mode, which has been flashed with TWRP uh, previously. Sometimes I've got to let go for that to pop up. So if, you, if it's a black screen and you're holding it for like five seconds, uh, just let go of the buttons and it should boot you into the bootloader. So use the volume buttons to navigate to recovery mode and then press the power button to select it and that will boot us into TWRP. From there, we're going to just flash the system image. Uh, so it's quite similar to Flashfire, to be honest. Okay, so we have an unmodified system partition uh, as of now. I'm not going to keep this read-only because you need read-write access to flash the system image on there. So for example, you, you press the kept, uh, keep read-only. Uh, but if you've swiped that before, that's fine. Just go over to mount and then uncheck mount system partition read only like that and then swipe to allow modifications and then mount the system I'm not sure if that's needed but we'll do it just in case and then tap on install and then go up one level so we're in the root of the SD card or pretty much wherever you copied it and now if you scroll down you're gonna see oh it's not there right you want to tap on install image instead and then scroll the way down and we'll see the system image now you need to select or identify what image this is it is indeed the system image and we're going to swipe to confirm this flash so from here, it's going to load up the system image and, I guess, essentially copy it over to the system partition. Now, this might take a little while. I'm not sure if it does a percentage calculation like Flashfire does, but if it doesn't, that's fine. We're going to be here for about, I'd say, two minutes at most. And then our image should be finished flashing. I'm just going to plug that in. And I'm going to fast forward this and hopefully we'll be able to see how much time actually elapsed through this. And right as I say that, the image has finished flashing, so you can see, I'm not sure if you see how long it took. No, you cannot. So that's fine. You're going to reboot system, uh, tap on that button, and that will reboot you all the way to Android, and hopefully the system image should be A-OK. -okay. So lastly, I'm going to show you how to flash this through fastboot. Right. You need to power off your device and hold volume down and power at the same time until you get to the screen. Or if you've held it long enough for like, say, 10 or 5, even 5 or 10 seconds, uh, you can let go and hopefully it will bring you to the bootloader screen. Now with the USB cable plugged in like I have below, uh, we can use Fastboot to flash this. So now we're going to head back over to our computer. And I have uh, uploaded three tutorials recently on how to get the Android platform tools onto your respective um, operating systems. So I have one for, if we just take a look, I have one for Windows, I have one for Mac OS, and I have one for pretty much any Linux uh, based operating system. I don't know why I said Ubuntu, but I think that, that was requested there. But these three flavors, so you'll be able to do what I'm doing on any computer essentially. You'll need to watch, uh, I think, the Mac OS and Ubuntu ones, or Linux, uh, because you need to put a dot forward slash in front of Fastboot or ADB to use them, like I've explained in those videos. So if you're unsure how to use it, uh, watch these two videos and you'll be or you'll know how to do it by the end. So with this folder still up and our system image still there, I'm going to open up a command prompt window. Now this is set up from my Windows tutorial, uh, so you can use ADB and Fastboot anywhere. I recommend looking at that if you haven't done it already, or if you remember how to do it last time, I'd be doing it previously in all of my other videos, where you hold, or where you download that zip and hold Shift and right click and open a command window there, and then type ADB or Fastboot. That is fine, as long as you can use Fastboot, uh, you should be good to go. So um, once you've, I guess, sorted that out, we're going to go ahead and flash the system image. So I'm going to type in Fastboot. Now I should make this bigger. Please excuse me for a second. Here we go. So I'm going to type in Fastboot, uh, flash, the command, and then we need to give it a partition. So I'm going to type in system. That is where our system image is going. And then lastly, our last parameter is pretty much the file that will be flashed to the system. So we can drag the system image onto the command prompt window, hit enter, and that will send it to our device to be flashed. And again, this will probably take, I'd say, two to three minutes, like before. This sends it in little sparse images. So I'm going to fast forward this, because this actually takes a couple minutes uh, until this is done. And then I'm going to reboot into Android, and you'll see that everything has been cleared away, so we're back to stock, pretty much. Okay, so it's just finished flashing, and now I'm going to reboot 
our device back into Android. So I'm just going to press the power button here to start it, or we can type in fast boot reboot. Uh, either way, we're going to restart our phone and I'm um, going to end this video right now pretty much. Thank you very much guys for watching. This was requested by, I guess, well, maybe a few people wondering how to get rid of the uh, pixel mod, but me telling them flash the stock system image uh, probably wasn't enough. And so here it is, I've covered three different ways you could possibly flash the stock system image, or any image for that matter, uh, apart from the bootloader I think, and onto your Nexus 6P, Well, which this could work for most devices out there using fast boot and all that, but uh, this is essentially specific for the Nexus 6P. So we should see this boot up at the same time as we did when we used Flashfire. Should be no differences there. But uh, yeah, we are already done and dusted. Now once we unlock, we should see everything's still the same. And there we go, and everything's still working, same as before. So there's no loss of data, no loss of root. If we, say for example, we'll go in and check on Flashfire itself, you can see that it, it's still rooted and it still works. If we give it a few seconds, uh, well you saw it down here that it was given super user permissions. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much guys for watching. If you have any other suggestions or even if you're unsure of anything in this video, feel free to leave it down in the comments below or if you just want to say hello or something like that. And I do have other videos planned, I'm sorry it's actually taken a long time to get a couple of these out such as installing Magisk and all that, uh, which I really want to do, which I did a few uh, weeks ago but I thought I'd do it a different way so that's why it's taken a little bit extra time to get uh, through all that and uh, so yeah happy holidays and I'll look forward to the new year with new phones coming out or well, new things coming out for the Nexus 6P because I'll be staying with that phone for all, pretty much until the Pixel 2 launches and even if that's not satisfactory maybe another year on the Nexus 6P so thank you very much guys for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one